Hey everyone. Okay, so I just want to share with you a useful visualization I have for the rewiring process. And I also want to share with you a just a piece of information that's worth keeping in mind whilst you are on that rewiring recovery journey. So in terms of the visualization, if we imagine our brain as a road system, so we imagine that in our brain, we have all these connections and these connections are built through our actions that we take and the thoughts that we engage in. So where our attention goes and those connections, they're wide reaching. And the more that we take an action, the more developed that connection becomes, the more we do something, the more it becomes ingrained and the more we repeat something, the wider and the stronger that connection becomes. So I've got kittens just to distract me 24 seven. Um, yeah, anyway, so basically the more we take an action, the more we engage in thoughts, the more those connections develop. Now, when you have an eating disorder, that neural sort of network, that road system is aligned with upholding that food scarcity mindset. And so the connections and the roads, they are all developed accordingly. You know, the actions you've taken, the thoughts you've engaged in, they have built that neural network. Now, it's also important to remember that when it comes to eating disorder neural connections, those have been initiated or sort of started on a context of fear. Now, what that means is that those connections are strong and that they build up very quickly. Because in the context of your body, one of the most frightening things is food scarcity. Like in the context of a mammal surviving, insufficient food in its environment is up there as one of the most stressful things. And so it makes very much sense for your body that is primed to try and survive to have a strong fear reaction to food scarcity. And so those that response to the food scarcity mindset that, right, OK, food is scarce in this environment. Therefore, we need to eat scarcely and we need to be moving to find where the food is abundance. Those behaviours that align with that food scarcity mindset, they get wired in on the back of fear. And so the reason I'm saying that is because it means that they can be stronger and they get big quick. So what this means in terms of this visualization is that when you are in recovery and you are embarking on changing that neural network, when you are carving new pathways, what you have to imagine is that your neural network for your eating disorder is like a system of massive motorways. And there are particular things on there that are like the super highways, things like exercise, things like healthy eating. Those are like your massive highways but the whole system is big roads you've engaged in those behaviors a lot you've repeated actions you have repeated attention in terms of thoughts you've engaged in it a lot and so therefore those roads are well laid down they are big they're smooth they're flat they're motorways you know if we think they're lit up it's easy that is where your brain automatically goes it goes down those roads which you've walked a lot that is the passive option but when you are recovering, you're embarking on changing those roads. Those roads no longer serve you. Yes, they're huge, massive, great big motorways, but they're not actually going where you want to go. You know, like, yeah, it's easy to be on it in the short term. But the long term is if you carry on on that motorway, it's, it's not taking you where you want to go. It's taking you to a, a future full of eating disorder. And that's not what you want. So you're embarking on that neural rewiring journey. What are you doing? <laughs> um look they're actually getting quite a lot bigger i feel a little bit like tabitha tabitha's got kittens at the minute this is little nora and this is tika she purrs like a lawnmower in one of my videos on instagram she's like lying on my lap and i think i think it was danny that contacted like commented being like is that purring and I listened back I was like yes you can hear her the whole way through her just little lawnmower purr um yeah anyway I got off top and that means changing up your road system so when it comes to embarking on those new actions I know that we've all been there you know what you've got to do you want to do it but the moment you get to the point of making the decision suddenly it's really hard and everything inside you, every fibre of your being is pulled in the direction of the safe thing, the disordered option, the easier thing in the now. 
And why that is, is because at that point, you are stood on that motorway going, I don't want to go where this motorway takes me. So I'm going to do something different. And you're looking up the bank. You've got this massive motorway. That's the eating disorder approved option. That's the eating disorder neural connection. This huge motorway lit up, flat, smooth, easy. You're stood there going, well, I don't want to go where this is going. So I'm doing something different. And neurally speaking, what that means is taking something as a different path. And that's the slight, very faint track that you can see running up the side of the bank that goes away from the motorway. And so you're stood on that huge motorway that's easy and the pull is intense and it feels like, well, why won't I just do this? It seems like the most logical thing is to stay on this motorway. Why in the hell would I go up there? But it's going, well, I, but I know I don't want to end up where this motorway takes me. And I know I need to do something different. I need to get off this motorway if anything's going to change. And so what you have to do is force yourself to go up that bank. And it's bumpy and it's rocky and it's overgrown and you're not really sure if it's the right way and you, it's all a bit confusing and you're looking back and that still seems like, well, why am I not just taking that? But you're taking it. You're like, well, I know I don't want to go where that motorway goes. So even if it's the easiest journey in the world and it's the smoothest thing in the right now, I know that actually long term, it's not going where I want to be. So it's not the right thing. So you're on that rocky path, that steep, jagged, brambles, everything. You're bashing your way through that. And it's overwhelming and it's chaotic and it's messy and it's confusing and there's fear and there's doubt, but you keep going. You keep carving that neural path, that new neural path. And the rewiring process this is where repetition, repetition is so, so important. You do it again and again. And we're not talking, you know, once a day, a few times a week, we're talking every day, every moment of every day, you need to be thinking, right, what can I do to challenge myself? What would piss my eating disorder off? Like what is pushing right now? What is carving new pathways? And the more you carve that new pathway and all those new pathways off that motorway, the smoother they get, the clearer they get, the more you walk them, the more trodden it gets and you keep doing it and you keep doing it and the brambles that get pushed back and the it starts to get easier and you think, oh, actually, yeah, I'm noticing now that I can see that that motorway is still there and it's still massive, but this is now feeling like, okay, I can do this. And the glorious thing is, the more you continue down those new paths, the more they ease up, the more they smoothen out, the more clear it all becomes and they're taking you where you want to go. They're driving you towards change they're driving you towards a place of freedom and it works the neural plasticity of the brain is absolutely incredible absolutely incredible like it's genuinely phenomenal you know and we have the capacity to be the architects of our own neural systems changing your actions and changing where your attention goes changes your neural networks it takes time it takes consistency it takes intensity it takes a hell of a lot of repetition but it works and it's absolutely the best thing ever like it's incredible what our brains can do when we get seriously intentional about harnessing that neuroplasticity and using it for our advantage and the other thing i really want to share with you which I think is something that's important when you are at that point where you're carving those new pathways, is that as you carve new pathways, those old roads, they stay there. You know, for a while, whilst you're carving new pathways, those old motorways are still there. Your brain's kind of like, hmm, we're not doing that very much, but she did it a lot before, so we might need it and keep it just in case. And this is where in recovery, one, as you're carving new pathways, you can still get thoughts that are chucked up from that old neural system. Suddenly, you know, you can be doing really well and feeling pretty good. And then suddenly you just get sledgehammered in the side by an eating disorder fear. And it's just like, oh my gosh, where has this come from? And it can feel very much like, well, that's my thought. Like, oh my gosh. And it's remembering that actually, as you carve those new pathways, those old ones are still there for a period of time. You know, and the more you focus on those new pathways and building those, eventually those old 
they get dormant and eventually they start to get grown over and the tarmac all breaks up and eventually it returns back to nature you know and you don't have that motorway anymore and you have these new motorways where you've enforced that new behavior and you've taken that new action and you've shifted your beliefs and you've done lots of hard work to build that new neural system you know? and knowing that those old neural networks stay there for a period of time whilst you're carving the new ones is really important because when you are in recovery you can be making serious headway you can be plowing forwards with your nutritional rehabilitation really challenging everything pushing on with that neural rewiring carving those new pathways but then maybe you take your foot off the accelerator a little bit maybe you engage in some kind of behavior no maybe just a little bit of restriction oh it's fine no I'll, oh no actually i'll pass on that i know i should be knee jerking yeses but no i'll just i you know I've, I've, i'm doing really well i'll no that's fine and basically what happens in that situation is you know where yeah you're carving all these brilliant new pathways those motorways they're still lying dormant and then you send a car down it you know you've you've engaged the action You've, you've had a thought in that direction. You've actioned, you've actioned it. You've actioned some restriction. You've actioned some kind of behavior which aligns with your fear of weight gain that supports that concept. You've actioned something which supports the idea that food is scarce. And so suddenly your brain goes, oh, we're doing that again, okay. And the motorway lights up. And you can go from feeling like, whoa, I'm doing so well. I'm plowing forwards. I can feel my eating sort of thoughts starting to quieten down. Like I'm feeling so much more empowered. Like, yes, I know this is right. You can go from that to suddenly being like, oh, whoa, everything is hard again. Like the eating disorder just suddenly feels like it has come out of nowhere. Like I'm getting all these thoughts back and it's just so intense. And this is where you really have to be very straight with yourself, brutally honest, in fact, and look at, well, what have your actions done? Have you sent a car back down one of those motorways? You know, or have you been regularly just sending, you know, the odd little car down? Just keeping it there, just keeping that motorway. You know, really be brutally honest with yourself about where your actions connect with that neural system and where your actions that you're taking are keeping that eating disorder neural network firing, you know? And so I know Tabitha speaks about the kind of, I think she calls them neural highways, if I remember rightly but she refers to healthy eating and exercise being particular ones. And it's so true. You know, those networks are often massive, massive motorways. And in recovery, you know, you can be making really great headway, but then you sort of actually think, oh, I think I'm good to, you know, go for a few walks now. That's, that's fine. I've just gone, I've just gone on a walk. And you send a car down that neural network and suddenly your brain's like, oh, okay, we're doing that again. Right, light it up. And suddenly it's like the compulsion comes back. And maybe it's immediate and maybe it's just, you know, from, you know, just that one walk you do. And then that next day it's like, oh, yeah, I'll go on another walk. That'd be fun. And then by the third day, it's a bit like, yeah, I'm going to go on this walk again. And then, you know, the next week you suddenly think, oh, yeah, actually, if I'm honest with myself, now that walk has got a bit bigger. And it's also becoming that I don't feel good not to go on the walk. And, oh, I've also noticed that some other thinking has started to come back and things that I thought I'd gotten past have become scary again. And. You know, again, it's that whole thing. If you've sent a car down that motorway, you have sent it down through your actions and it has lit it back up again. And the same goes for healthy eating. You know, that whole thing of like, you're maybe you've plowed forward and you've made some great progress with your nutritional rehabilitation. Actually, your extreme hunger is just, it's just dying down a little bit. And you're thinking, oh, this is amazing. I actually, yeah, you know, it's right. I won't just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat forever. Actually, this extreme hunger is not just never ending. I can listen to my body. I can trust my body. Isn't this brilliant? And you're celebrating that. But then you just kind of bumble into, oh, just, yeah, I'll just pick that, that kind of healthier option. And yeah, I'll just, I'll just have that. And that would be, oh, I feel like that. I feel like something a bit fresh. I feel like something a bit light. And again, you sent a car down that neural highway. You've taken that foot off the accelerator. And in doing so, I've engaged in behaviours which light up that disordered neural network. And so this is why, like I say, I think the road visualization is such a good one for recovery. You know, when you're at that point of taking action and you you know that you need to do it and you know that 
half an hour ago you were like yeah I can't wait to get to that place I'm going to order exactly and you're sat there with the menu and it's like and you're pulled to order that thing that's jumping out that's safe remember that is you stood on that motorway and your brain is going but this is what we always do come on the motorway it's massive come on remember you don't want to go where that motorway ends up even if it's easy to be on it, it doesn't mean it's going in the right direction that pathway that's very faint up the bank that is taking you in the direction that you want to go and so although it doesn't feel easy to pick it at that moment long term that is the only option that's going to get you where you really want to be you know so that hold on to that and the second thing is remember that whilst you are carving these new pathways for a period of time not forever you know if you are seriously intentional and seriously seriously insistent on applying opposite actions to every single eating sort of behavior and calling yourself externalizing all of those eating disorder thoughts you know really really being vigilant about it and with time and consistency and full full energy restoration those neural networks they don't just go dormant they get grown over but for a period of time when you are carving new those old ones are lying there dormant and so you have to be vigilant about not taking your foot off the accelerator because things can be going seemingly well. And then there's that little behavior that just, you just kind of allow it in, you know, it just happens. And you think, oh, it's fine, it's not a problem. And suddenly things snowball very quickly. And that is because that neural network is there and it's dormant and your brain's like, hmm, yeah, we are doing new things, but I'll just keep this in case because we did this a lot, so it might be useful. And funnily enough, your brain then goes, oh, yeah, it was useful. We should have kept that. Yeah, right. There's cars going down now. Light it all up. You know, be vigilant. Be really vigilant. And yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go. I hope that that has been useful. Um, I know it's something that helped me to kind of, uh, yeah, visualise, and that's the best word, the neural rewiring process. And um, yeah, anyway, speak to you soon. <laughs>